full swing. What's going on with you? Make sure you hit that bell, hit that subscribe button so you get the notifications when we drop a new episode like this one right here. And another special edition, we like to call this segment The Rundown. This is where I get the chance to sit down with artists across the globe and they open up with us about their music and their artistry. Oh, man, Ricky Persaud Jr. is on the phone lines. So what's going on, Ricky? I'm doing good, man. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> hot day up here, but I'm I'm lasting with the AC, you know? I know that's right, man. got to stay cool in this hot world right now, man. <laughs> yeah, you can't go out to get ice cream because, you know, all the ice cream shops are closed. But yep. you got to make do with what you have. That That is a fact. That is a fact. I mean, this is a different time for us all right now. But, you know, make do as much as you can and still live life. That's what I say. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the phone lines. Uh, got a chance to check out the new record, MYOB, Mind Your Own Business. We're going to talk about that uh, a little later on as well as get into the single itself. I'll let you introduce that a little later as well. But let's open up a little conversation. Let's talk to Ricky Persaud Jr. Find out a little more inf information for all my listeners out there. Let's talk about your background coming from New Jersey and what got you involved <laughs> in music. Well... I, my name is Ricky Passad Jr., and I'm currently going into my fourth year at Berkeley College of Music, for which I'm there on a full four-year scholarship. Oh, wow. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank so you. So this uh, music is real for you. This is not a game. Is... <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I live and breathe music, man. I mean, I'm literally in the studio seven days a week. So I just want to craft and just make as much music as I can. Mm -hmm. Right. So how did your your upbringing get you involved in music growing up in New Jersey? What was that landscape like, your family life and musical background? Well, I grew up in a very musical family, you know, with my mother playing keyboards and flute when she was growing up and my father engineering for a lot of Caribbean acts back in the day. They okay. just had all this equipment, all this music stuff just laying around the house. And I was just, you know, that those were my toys growing up. I didn't really play with the toy, uh, you know the bears or the action figures like playing the keyboard that was my thing you know mm -hmm. and going on you know they they wanted to make sure that their kids would have as much education when it comes to music as possible so that's when they got me into like music appreciation classes at four that i went into audition for a legit music school which was north school of the arts also at four i, I, I studied bass guitar piano and then I went on to other schools, and I was just learning as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it, at a young age, you were engulfed in music and musical instruments. Yes, yes, absolutely. That's dope. That's dope, man. I bet that's uh, different. I mean, I'm coming from a background where, you know, my mother loved to listen to music. She, I, I remember waking up. You know, on the weekends, and she's pumping the latest oldies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it's one thing I would imagine to grow up in a household where you just listen to music, but then to grow up in a household where you actually engulfed in it, and your parents are doing it, you're around it, the instruments and the the energy of it. I bet that's a totally yeah. different vibe. Yeah, and especially so in in my household because uh, with my father being of Indian descent coming from the Caribbean, and my mother being of African American descent coming from America. It was like music playing from all around the world, constantly playing in my house from like Bob Marley to the Beatles to, to Nirvana to Third World. It was just a cool melting pot of things. And I believe that it's because of being exposed to those various genres is why my music sounds as it is. And mm -hmm. as, as you've heard, you know, my music is is um, rock, pop, Latin yeah. world. And a mixed board of other stuff. It's a mashup. It's definitely a mashup uh, vibe, a mashup genre uh, collective uh, I like when I heard the music I was like wow he really went in like I get a good vibe of like a it's a party record but it's like multicultural vibes in it as well and I really dig that yeah um, another thing that was big for me is your lyrics speaking about standing up essentially and not being torn down or not backing down so I yes, think even the yes. content is important um, for a record like this um, yes, absolutely. I mean, it was a lot of the lyrics were inspired by, you know, you know, the stuff going on, you know, with George Floyd and the racial equality going on. And I just I'm just speaking my my how I feel about the situation. And that's what I'm trying to do, trying to amp people up to to finally change this 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 the situation that we're in. Yeah. So a little bit of enlightenment, trying to uh, enlighten people as well as. Yeah. 
as well as give them a party vibe. Like I said, I, yes, I definitely, absolutely. I definitely felt that. Um, I can appreciate the mashup of all the the genres as well. Um, I I I can definitely hear that record at big festivals, carnivals. You know what I'm saying? Maybe even like cruise yeah, ships. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I would love to see that live. You see what I'm saying? Oh man, if you you really got to see me live because I go all in when I play live. I mean, playing live is one of my favorite things, and that's one of the the number one thing that I'm looking forward to when quarantine is over is to play out to the fans again. Yeah. Uh, what do you appreciate most about music? I appreciate that it can. Music literally speaks louder than words, and it, it's literally a language that no matter what background you come from or, or your middle class, upper class, you, you enjoy music. And it's just multicultural cultural and all that okay. kind of stuff. What, what drew you, I guess, into your genre, your lane of music? Because as you stated, you kind of do a mashup uh, of music, bringing from reggae to pop to funk, a little bit of everything, rock. Um, what what brought you there? What how did you find that space? How did you well, find that creation for a new genre essentially? Well, um, being in the industry, I've realized that people would expect you to only do one genre and doing this. So at one point in my career, I was just doing rock, and then another point in my career, I was just doing reggae. But I was just saying to myself, I was getting bored of just doing going you know just straight narrow because. If you just do just rock or just reggae, it's been done before. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, as an artist, how can I make music that is definitive to what I want to do? And that's when I started experimenting and combining all these different genres and, and mashing it together. And I guess a, a, a thing that really helped me was that, that I studied at NGPAC Jazz Routines, but simultaneously I was going studying, by the way, NGPAC Jazz Routine is a big jazz school in New Jersey. And then Mark Murphy's music was another school I was going to focus in rock and indie music. So that's learning those two theories and all those fundamentals. That's those how is to bring those things together. Yeah, I bet that that background and training in music, I, I'm I'm sure that like really helped out with you finding your own niche for your music. Yeah. Another thing, I just wanted to encourage people to just just be exposed to different music because I have a lot of friends that just listen to, hey, man, I just listen to hip hop and just hip hop. And I'm like, if you're at a buffet and you got all this stuff to eat, why would you just eat the egg rolls, you know? <laughs> That's like, why I you're really... doing yourself a disservice, in, in other words, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And that was one of the goals I wanted to do with my music is I wanted people to listen to as many things as possible, but through like a pop lens, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the music. Let's talk about the record, MYOB. What, 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 how do we come up with this title first and foremost? And then let's talk about the record itself and uh, what inspired it. Well, the MYOB, like the acronym Mind Your Own Business, is basically the framework of the whole album. And what it basically means is, you know, it's just a coming a tell story of knowing one's true self and not listening to the haters. Because... You know, in my career, I've got a lot of, you know, admiration and cool stuff. and But I've definitely come a lot of haters, you know, hecklers and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just trying to share my experiences with the haters and have people around the world who are going through similar situations know how to deal with those situations. And that's kind of what this album is. Got you. And how did the, the process for this, the, the album itself come about? Like... What did that look like for you? Like, what, what space were you in? What, what energy were you feeling when you put this project together? Honestly, I was talk a little me. pissed off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Talk to me. We keep it honest over here on the bandwagon radio. Talk to me. Let it out. But I feel like, for me, instead of, you know, finding the person talking smack and actually beating them up and telling them off, I just take my frustration and put it into music. Gotcha. And that's what... And this is just how I feel about certain things in regards to bullying, racial inequality, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just filtering it. And that's what how this came about. Mm. Negative energy, but I'm trying to make it positive. That's what I'm trying to so say. So you're doing you know? a spinoff with the negative energy, in other words. You're using yeah, it to I'm your advantage. Yes, spinning it up, yeah, to be positive. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the, or uh, who, I should say, are some of the people that you 
need to mention or deserve acknowledgement for their assistance or help with this project? Well, most definitely my family, you know, with my little brother, my father and my mother all helping me co-write some interesting rhythms and lines because um, they're, they're, they're my greatest support, honestly. And, and they've really helped me grow as an artist throughout all these years. Got to give up big ups to the fam. Big ups to the yes. fam. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, uh, what would you say is the, the main focus of your project? Like, what do you want the listeners and the viewer to take from your project? When someone's telling you flack or just saying you're never going to make it or whatever thing you're going to be in, don't listen to them. You got to follow what your heart says and just go with, with your your dreams, you know? Definitely, definitely understand. Definitely do. Um, how do you prepare to record? Like, where, where do you go mentally when you want to record? What's your process like for recording? Like, is, are you a person that, yo, I need peace and quiet while I'm recording or while I'm processing my lyrics? Are you a person that enjoys having people around? Um, you know, like, where, where are you at mentally? Where do you go to, to find your creativity? Do you need to be ducked off in a corner? You're away from everybody? Well, yeah, I'm, I would consider myself an introvert. So I definitely get my best ideas when I'm, like, alone. And I literally tell much sometimes to my family, like, to shut up. I'm doing my thing. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I, sh I should really get, like, a record button outside of my door or the the, the, the recording studio door. But um, how I used to do recordings, I usually lay down the, the drums first, and then I do the bass guitar, and then, like, I do, like, all the, the little percussion things. And then lastly, I would do the vocals because I feel like that's, like, the icing on the cake. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any fears when it comes to recording and performing? Personally, I like to ask artists this question because I like to find out a little more about the artists themselves, like their process and, you know, how how comfortable they are, um, because I think a lot of people get it mistaken when they see the entertainment piece and they see the people on stage and they don't really anticipate how hard that really is to be up there um, and have all eyes on you. So how do you feel about that? Do you have any fears when it comes to performing or recording? Honestly, every time I perform, I'm scared out of my mind. But, <laughs> but, but I, I put on a character for I'm fearless and nothing can stop me. And, and I feel, and yeah, it's a big mental thing to try to perform and try to keep the crowd interested, you know. And that's definitely a fear. But so far recently, I've, I think I've done enough performances where I feel comfortable in my, in my shoes. And I feel like I can, I can hold a crowd at this point in the stage. Mm -hmm. What uh, musicians inspire your music? So from growing up and even now, these artists have stuck with me like the Beatles, Michael Jackson, Prince, mm -hmm. Bob Marley, Nirvana, okay. and Jimi Hendrix. Because what I really admire of those artists is that when they came into the music scene, they completely changed it for good and, and for the better. And that's why I, I, I admire them so much because, you know, they're just they're just so amazing you know and with the songwriting production and all that stuff definitely said some some classic names there brother uh <laughs> some some game changers even yes yeah definitely okay that's dope that's dope um what how do you how do you like stay focused? I mean, like right now we got COVID nineteen going on. I'm sure you have a family, you have things going on. You're an artist, you know. How do you stay focused on your main goal of exposing your music and exposing your talents? Well, it's just that, uh, you know, I, I've been doing music my whole life, so it's not really that hard for me to just focus on the music because I've dealt with a lot of hard stuff in the past. Like I was bullied in mil middle school. Mm -hmm. And I had to come to a point where I can't let that bullying get to me. And I just got to focus on what I need to do with the music. And so, yeah, just, just with experience, I just I just I just snap into it and I just get into that mode where nothing outside can hurt me or nothing can like just distract me, you know. Mm -hmm. And as hard as things may seem, especially now, I try to, you know, pray to God and just keep that positiveness going, you know. Global recording artist Ricky Prasad Jr. on the phone lines right now. The new record, NYOB, Mind Your Own Business. Yeah, sometimes you got to tell people that too, man.
<laughs> I, I was in love with the title when I heard it and saw what the acronym meant. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And then the record to go along with it, a party record, like I said, I get real good vibes from it, um, multicultural vibes, uh, mashup of different genres with the rock and reggae pop, a little bit of funk in there. Of course, some hip hop influences in there as well. Um, yes. And then the lyrics, like I said, you know, having meaningful lyrics is always important to me too when you it's, it's okay to have a party record and have a good record that you can have fun to but i think when you can say something in that same record i think that that you know for the artist i think that puts that artist on another another uh platform another plateau even um yes I so absolutely. i applaud you i applaud you for taking that thank you risk because some people would like to just stay along with the norm or go along with what's hot right now and you know mm -hmm. it takes a, a a real artist to step out there and on their own um on their own as well as as well as pushing themselves forward with not having an, a, a blueprint essentially like you don't have a blueprint right now there's a, i haven't heard of an artist with this type of mashup and creativity that you're trying to bring to the game um having a musical background and then having so many different influences uh from different genres so thank uh, you man thank you that means the world to me thank you no doubt no doubt um so like trying times you know standing up for your rights not letting others bring you down this record is very meaningful. Is that pretty much the the your goal when it comes to your listeners and your followers? Is just as essentially speak positivity into everybody, and you know, is that essentially the message of your overall uh, movement? One hundred percent, man. Because you know, we, we're there's always going to be a dark time, but if you can listen to music, you know, my music, for example, feel good about it. That's that's what I accomplished to do you know that's what i want to do gotcha um i like to ask artists this question i gotta ask you i want you to be very transparent here all right be very honest go ahead man go ahead i'm ready are you afraid of failure like not completing your full mission are you are you afraid of not reaching that ultimate uh goal i mean my goal now is just to just get my music out there and just keep doing what I love. I mean, right now, I feel like I'm su successful at what I do. And, I, of course, I just want to keep elevating it to the next level. But no matter if, if I don't get anywhere, I'm going to keep doing music to the day I die, to be absolutely honest. Because it's just something that helped me in tremendous ways with my dark, you know, all the stuff that I dealt with in the past. And it's just something I, I'm not going to give up. So, no, I'm not afraid of failure. Okay. <laughs> all right um talk to my listeners a little bit if you had to describe yourself or essentially you know sell yourself who is ricky Passard jr like who are you as an artist why should our listeners support your movement and listen to the music well i blend genres from all around the world so it has a mass appeal and I'm always have a positive message to support that music. And it's always upbeat and fun instead of it being, you know, dragging and depressing, you know? Yeah. Okay. And what I want to do is just, is just change the minds of a lot of people around the world for them to think more positively, more optimistic about life and just the people around them. And, you know, I play all the instruments in my record. So what you're hearing is 100% me. There's no, you know, false people coming into my project. It's, it's me. And it's, the most genuine, like most recently, I've been releasing the most genuine music that I felt like I've been putting out. And I feel like it can connect with a lot of people. And that's who I am, you know, trying to make the world a better place with music. Dope, dope. <laughs> How important is the team around you? It's, it's everything to me because, you know, my mother, she has a big part of managing me. My father has a big part of engineering my projects. And my brother is a big part of... Um, co-writing with me okay. so with that support team there's always i can never be stared wrong because they're always trying to do what's best for me not what they think you know profit profitable wise you know got you so they have your best of course being family for the most part i would think they have your best you know interest in mind making decisions yeah. for you yes absolutely to be honest, you know, my mother can hurt my feelings sometimes because she would tell me if a song sucks or not. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, Ricky, brother, like I, I, I tell artists this all the time. You need that. You don't want yes men in your corner and yes no, women yes. in your corner. Like you want I, that yes. authentic 
real answer. Like, is this hot, <laughs> mom? No, son, it's not. You know, take it back to the drawing board. Bring it back out in another hour. Let me hear it then. You know, sometimes you need that that hard, stern no to really yeah. take, you know, take yourself seriously sometimes. I mean, we can we sometimes, especially in this industry, we as entertainers, artists, media, talents in general, we we, we tend to, like you say, you put on a, a facade, our character. So essentially, sometimes we can kind of live that character essentially and not be able to see like we probably should see or hear even when it comes to music. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes that outside party, that's that's very important. And that's why I asked that question, too, is because that's very important. You don't need I don't feel like you need yes men around you. I think it's always better yeah. to have authentic people around you when it comes to making decisions and when it comes to even giving you rapport and feedback on things, you know. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And that's the cool thing about my family is that they will shut me down if something's not right. And they will tell me how it is. So. <laughs> I'm glad to have them in my corner. Kudos to the family. That's 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 the makings of a, of a solid team. It's always it's not always right. It's sometimes you gotta agree to disagree. Sometimes you gotta agree in the middle, you know. But it, as long as everybody has one common goal, I think is the biggest the biggest thing. You know, that's the Absolutely. biggest deal. So Absolutely. I, I applaud your family and yourself for that, man. Working together as a team, as a as a unit. Yes. Thank you, man. Thank you. Um, how important is it to you when it comes to releasing your music projects? Like, what's most important to you? Just trying to reach as many people as I can, you know, because the point of the project is, is to get people to understand the message and try to live live what I'm trying to say, you know. I got you. That that makes sense. So just per, it's essentially just getting your message out, being perceived. Yeah. Being Regardless if they like it or not, I just that's just what I want to do, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, how important is making the right investments to you? It it means a lot for us. I mean, we've done a lot of trial and error. We've done things that don't work out. And we're basically at a point now where we're just sussing out what's not working. We're trying to put the investments in the stuff that is working, or at least try new things. Because every year we're trying to elevate to the next level in regards to how we, how we carefully, where we put our money in, you know? Mm-hmm. That can be a big deal. I mean, just making the right decisions when it comes to, you know, what pot to put the money in to move the projects forward, to move the artists forward. Yeah, it's it's tough, but it's, it's like I said, if you're trial and error, you, 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 you find the right thing that's for you. Yeah. All right. Um, what's coming up? For Ricky Passad Jr. Let my listeners know what's on the verge. Any new music videos? Any visuals they should be on the lookout for? Any new music projects? Oh yeah, we're 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 trying to um, get down a we're, we're trying to um, seal a place for where we can record our new music videos because right now, obviously, there's a lot of places that are closed. But we're trying yeah. as much as we can to try to put out new music videos for this album. And also, I'm also working on my my seventh album for. We I don't know if it's gonna be released sometime this th- later this year or next year, but we're gonna get that thing out there, you know. Well, good luck on that too, man. I, I know it's a little trying with the times right now to, like you said, get certain things done. But um, I, I definitely feel like, especially with some of your type of projects, those visuals will definitely help sell the music. Yeah, and, and another thing I, I forgot to mention is that um, I'm also getting ready for the Grammys. Because we've been, um, my team has been working on that submission process and things in regards to that. Because, you know, I become a voting member a little while back ago, and we're just trying to go through that. Because we don't even know if there's going to be a Grammys for 2021. But regardless, we're going to yeah. still go full force with the promotion and marketing as much as we can in regards to that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Um, talking about the record in YOB again. Uh, what what type of instruments were used exactly on that i'm i'm big on bands and music and like i do a lot of live music events here in charlotte and one of the things that stands out to me just from watching these entertainers man like is how they zone out into their instruments man yeah zone out brother so this for me is real big to talk to a musician you know because i admire you guys um just so talk to me about like what type of instruments were even used on that record and were they live were they all live instruments or 
Ooh, where should I start? I mean, <laughs> talk to me. That's say, what I'm saying. <laughs> I would say 70% are live instruments, and then the other 30% are like synthesizer stuff and stuff that you couldn't really play live. But basically, I played live guitar, live bass, live keyboards, live percussions. Wow. Ooh, but when I was live vocals, I did all the vocals through bass to soprano. So mm -hmm. most of the live instruments were you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I play all the instruments. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wow. All instruments. Like, what? What's that like? Being like, what type of <laughs> training do you go through to learn all the instruments? Like, what? What was that youth like? Like coming up, I gotta know. Like, was I it mean, a lot of rehearsals and practices and concerts and? Well, I started um, music lessons when I was four. At um. I took music appreciation classes, and then that led me to go to study at North School of the Arts, and that's when I took bass, drums, guitar, wow. and keyboards. And this is all when I was still four years old. Wow. Yeah. At four and, years old. Yeah, man. And then um, I was there for a little while. Then when I was around eight or nine, I studied jazz and guitar at Mark Murphy's Music, and I wanted to amp it up to the next level for jazz. guitar. I think it was just having so much education related to music and just being in several different fields music wise and, and um instrument wise i think that's why it enabled me to play as good as i do on these records you know wow man i applaud you brother like i again i i admire musicians and i know the type of time that it takes to learn and become that great on those on different instruments like most of the bands that i have uh i do an event called soulful sundays here in charlotte north carolina and started mm. one in greenville north uh, excuse me greenville south carolina as well um and most of the musicians they're playing two three four five different instruments and that yeah. amazes me because again i know the type of time and practice that has to go into becoming good at each instrument yeah I mean, when I was talking about me playing the different instruments, I don't want to make it seem like it was like flawless that I just picked it up and I just played it. It took time. Yeah. Well, that's what I definitely wanted my listeners to hear that, like that process of, you know, like, yeah, I, at, at the age of four, I'm already learning four different instruments. Like, <laughs> this is real. Like, I was training since four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think deal. about it like that, but yeah, you're right. No, it's a big deal. I mean, it. As long as it's something you love and you enjoy, you appreciate, and then your family can home in on that and support you on that, I think it's beautiful. Truly beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and again, like, playing instruments back in those days, for me, it was literally like, this is my toys, you know? That was my yeah, my free time, you know? <laughs> that was your Legos. Was like, <laughs> those yeah. were your Legos right there. Don't need that. Don't <laughs> I get it. All right, cool. So let me talk to you about up and coming. You, you, I'm sure you've had conversations with a lot of up and coming artists. What, what would you tell an up and coming artist that's trying to get into this music industry? A musician that's trying to get into the game. He's watching you. He's watching you move around. How? how what are you telling him? What do you tell that that artist to keep him motivated? Well, I'm just gonna say that you know there are gonna be a lot of closed doors, but sooner or later, if your determination and your mind is there, you'll get to where you want to go, you know? So stay steady in the course. Stay focused. Absolutely. Consistency. Because Absolutely. there's a lot of stuff that can throw you off, especially, with, you know, with the haters. That's why I made this album. <laughs> made, the, made the album for the haters. You hear that, haters? NYOB, mind your own business. It's for y'all. <laughs> All right, well, this, I think it's about that time. Go ahead and give your social media real quick, and I'm going to let you introduce the record. Yes, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and hmm, I, this is so many platforms I'm on. Um, and you can also follow me on my personal website, rickypersadjr com. I can say that again. It's rickypersadjr com. All right, go ahead and introduce the new record for him right now, Ricky. All right, so this record... As I said before, it's a coming a tale story about knowing one's true self and not letting anyone get in your way of your dreams. So that's what MIOB is. That's right, man. Turn it up right here on the Bandwagon Radio.
this year. 